Chess friends, I was just watching a game between Jan Epomdushi and Magnus Carlsen. Something absolutely insane happened in that game. I will show you the entire game and just somewhere in the middle you will be surprised with some uh, absolutely remarkable, shocking moment between these two top players. Napo plays with white, goes for 1e4, c5. The Sicilian, knight of 3, d6. And he goes for the move bishop b5, solid developing move. We call it the Moscow variation. Very solid, reliable setup. Black goes for the move knight bd7 to uh, stop the uh, check. And the um, knight is temporarily not doing too well. But after castling, we are going to attack the bishop with the move a6. And well, white is for choice what he's going to do with the bishop in... Um, in some cases, white decides to uh, trade off the bishop for the knight. In other cases, the bishop even goes back to d3. Looks maybe a little bit strange, but Napo decides to go for bishop e2. Keeping the bishop on the board, but now after knight f6, white is um, having a small issue with that pawn. So he goes for the move d3. But now this bishop on e2 doesn't look too great at all. But we have a position in which all the pawns, all the minor pieces are still on the board. So it will be a slow maneuvering game, but it can explode any time. e6, a4, preventing black from expanding on the queen side. Black goes for b6, so the bishop can be developed uh, there very soon. And now, interesting moment. Maybe uh, you would expect a uh, developing move with either the knight from b1 or the bishop from c1. But Napo played here knight fd2. This looks absolutely against the rules of opening play. You're dropping back with a developed piece, but the plan is to launch the f pawn. After bishop e7, f4 on the board, and black uh, castled. And uh, so far, players were following an uh, earlier game of Sadvani against uh, Giri, in which queen e1 was played, intending to uh, bring the queen over to the king side. In the game, we will see very similar attacking uh, ideas as Napo played the move bishop f3, eyeing the rook on uh, a8, maybe e5 will come soon, but bishop comes to b7, knight c3, so developing the knight. And Magnus goes for the move d5. He wants to uh, grab some uh, space in the center and white is for a choice. He doesn't have to make a decision yet what to do with the pawn. He can play e5, but then knight e8 will be played and very soon black will challenge that pawn with a move uh, f6. So e5 is one option. Other option is to take on d5, but after knight takes d5, I think black is quite uh, relieved to exchange that uh, e pawn for the for the d pawn. Napo goes for the move g4. This is the move we love to see. Very aggressive move. Intending to go uh, for the move g5 next, kicking the knight back. And what is uh, Black supposed to do? Black can now decide himself either to take or advance the pawn to d4. Advancing the pawn to d4 looks, um, looks interesting as you're questioning the knight. But at the same time, you're closing the center. And after knight e2, White is uh, looking for ways to open up the, the king side. And when the center is closed, it will be harder for Black to generate counterplay. But this is definitely interesting if Black would have followed up here with, uh, with e5. But this all didn't happen and Magnus basically uh, said, well, my knight on d7, it doesn't look great at all. I'm going to improve it. I play here the move knight b8, guys. Remarkable uh, decision. But the knight is on its way to uh, c6. g5, White continues with the attacking plan. Knight e8, so that the queen retains control over the pawn on uh, d5. E takes d5, e takes d5, pawn is still defended twice. Bishop g2, so that the queen can uh, either come to g4 or maybe to f3. Knight c7, protecting the pawn one more time. And white goes knight c4. Very interesting move, taking advantage of uh, that pin. Bishop on b7 is unprotected. You... Um, you don't really want to take because then the bishop takes on b7, position gets open, it's nice for white's uh, bishop pair. So black played here, interesting move, knight c6, and this is a pawn sacrifice, because the pawn on b6 can just be taken now. Knight takes b6, and even now, rook on a8 is under threat. Rook b8 was a very conscious 
pawn sacrifice as the knight on um, b6 doesn't have that many squares to go to, but it can still take on d5. So it's a double pawn sacrifice. Knight takes d5, knight takes d5. And Magnus, he knows what he is doing. He goes for the move knight d4. And now the knight is under threat. And uh, of course, if the knight goes away, then you can uh, take the bishop on g2. And well, center is open, you're two pawns up. But white may soon regret having advanced these pawns uh, prematurely. That's the interesting clash material versus uh, king safety. White plays c4, supporting the knight one more time. And the bishop goes to d6. You're two pawns down, but your pieces all of a sudden are quite nice. Look at the knight on d4. It's nicely supported. Bishops are fine. And the rook is on the half-open b file. So it looks for opportunity to... Uh, to strike on uh, on b2 and white still needs some uh, way to uh, include all its uh, pieces especially these pieces on the queen side they're not doing much yet therefore bishop e3 played intending to take on uh, d4 and of course that's something you don't want to uh, to allow so the knight goes to f5 keeping an eye on this bishop on uh, e3 bishop takes d5 is the main threat so you eliminate the defender of the Bishop on e3, so that after that you can take on e3. Bishop d2 played. Bishop takes d5. Bishop takes d5. Rook takes b2. Black regains pawn number one and enters with the rook on the second rank. But at the moment there are no threats yet. But the big question is how is white going to entangle? You would like to get rid of that uh, rook on b2. It's a very annoying piece. I would say something like rook b1 is a, is a logical move to challenge the, the rook. In the game, guys, let's have a look what's going to happen now. There followed shocking move, bishop c3. Bishop attacks the rook. And now the rook is likely going to, to move somewhere. But I give you a second to figure out what is the best move here for black. And let's see if you're better then Magnus Carlsen, as Magnus Carlsen missed a fantastic tactical opportunity. And also Napo was smiling when this uh, moment uh, appeared on the board. Because Black had his shocking move. The queen sacrifice. Queen takes g5 and it's game over. It was not played in the game. But this queen sacrifice, it, it does work. And the point is that after f takes g5, now the diagonal for the bishop has been opened. It's bishop takes h2 with check. King got to go into the corner and now, now the knight joins the attack in this checkmate. Beautiful mating pattern with these three pieces all together. Queen takes g5. It's this kind of move you're looking for many moves ahead. But the moment it's possible you uh, forget about it as the rook on b2 was the main problem. I should point out that uh, other moves there are probably also not, uh, not going to work. Position is just wide open and it should lead to uh, to mate very soon for instance king h1 it seems to me that knight g3 is just a very nice move with the point that after taking the knight the queen can come to h6 with check king goes to g1 and it's checkmate on uh, on h2 very convincing line and missed by these two top players let's have a look what happened in the game magnus thought well my rook is hanging but also, the bishop is no longer guarding the e3 square. I go for knight e3, forking both the queen and rook. Queen e1. And now if you take the rook, well, it's bishop takes b2 and the knight cannot return. All the squares have been covered by white pieces. Therefore, knight takes d5 was played. This is also interesting because, okay, if you just take that knight, the rook goes away and these pawns are really weak. And very soon, for instance, a move like queen d7 followed by queen g4 can be played. Queen needs to uh, defend the bishop, but also needs to keep an eye on the king side. I think black is in really good shape. So therefore, white had a different plan. Decided to take the rook on b2. Knight takes f4. So black is an exchange down, but he has a very tricky knight on, uh, on f4. Maybe knight takes d3 is one of the ideas. But the main threat, obviously, is queen takes g5 with check. And after that, very soon, the queen will land on g2. Queen h4 was played. 
should point out that queen g3 is a mistake because of knight e2. You're losing your queen. Queen h4 on the board. And now something like queen c7 looks like a reasonable move to support the knight one more time. But instead knight takes d3 was played. But after bishop to c3, the knight feels a bit unstable. And white has uh, many ideas, including rook ad1. And uh, white is uh, very active. So Magnus played bishop e5. Offering the exchange of bishops, but now white still has a very nice initiative with all active pieces. Black has to be very careful. Knight g6. Knight goes back to attack the queen. Queen g4. Rook e8. Initiating the exchange of, uh, of rooks. And I have to say that black's position feels very suspicious. Especially after something like queen f5. Looks as, as if this is a very nice double attack hitting the two weak points in um, in black's position. So was not played. Napo played h4. Rook takes e1. Rook takes e1. And the attack is still in, uh, in progress. And especially if queens will come off the board, then it's a technical win. Rook versus knight should be very easy, but still weak pawns on the queen side. So white is either going for the exchange of queens or launch a decisive attack. Knight went back to f8. Very nice defensive move to guard the back rank to be able to mobilize your queen. And black's main source of counterplay is that if white ever becomes active with the queen, there may follow a bunch of checks as the white king doesn't have, have a safe place to, uh, to hide. What should white do? Play h5 here. It was not played, but I think it's a very instructive move. The idea is that you would like to play h6 very, very soon to um, continue attacking the black king. If black ever goes g6, then you would like to install your pawn on uh, h6 so that the next plan will be to get a queen on this diagonal to threaten checkmate. It will be very hard to defend. Instead, there follow the move rook f1. But now Magnus played excellent move g6. So that white no longer can get a pawn to uh, to h6 with these uh, mating threats I, I just mentioned. If you play h5 now, in fact, it's g takes, queen takes, and black will start giving uh, these checks. You can take the pawn on c4 and protect your own weakness on uh, f7. The knight can return very soon. And with that knight coming back to g6, white is missing its h pawn to, uh, to challenge that knight. So things are not that simple, but if white continues here with a solid move like queen f4, his advantage is beyond any doubt. In fact, there followed queen f3, threatening to capture on f7. But here, unbelievable. Um, Napo just blundered the pawn because it's queen d4 check, king g2, and now if the queen takes c4, black captures the pawn and defends that pawn on f7. So white doesn't get a chance to, to take that pawn. a5 was played, now the queen comes back. And you see that black has a knight and two pawns for the rook. So materials even. And white is unable to create any uh, any new threats. Black placed its pawn on c4. Rook e2 attacking the queen on e6. Queen went to d7. Queen e4 attacking the pawn. Queen protects the pawn on, um, on c4. And at the same time, it also does attack the pawn on a5. Queen e5 played, offering the exchange of queens. I already said that that's uh, good news for white if that happens. Pawn on a5 is protected as well. Queen d7 was played with the idea to enter on g4 with a very annoying check and the pawn on h4 can be taken after that. After queen e4, that uh, threat has been parried and you're attacking the pawn, but black goes back to c7 and this is um, leading to a repetition of moves. So after the move queen e4, the players agreed to a draw in this absolutely shocking game in which Magnus just missed a mate in a, in a few moves with a beautiful, stunning queen sacrifice missed by both players. After that, Magnus was even lucky to, uh, to escape with a draw. But these are these kind of exciting moments we are all looking for as uh, chess fans. Hope you liked it. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you would like to see more of these dramatic blunders even by world's best players.